All right, we now welcome a very special guest, a freshman with the Nodak Sens. He's a world junior gold medalist who was selected 44th overall by your Ottawa Senators in the 2020 draft. It's a pleasure to welcome the K-Train, Tyler Clevin himself, locked on Senators. What's up, man? Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. I want to start with that. Has the K-Train nickname gotten back to you yet? Because it's been, been circulating on social media, for sure. Yeah, I know. I've, I've heard of it before, and um, it's pretty cool that everybody talks about it. Um, I don't know. I know that um, Big Rig is kind of one of my names that um, a lot of people call me, but you know, there's uh, been a senator that's been called that already, so I don't know. We'll see if it sticks. Do you know Anton Volchenkov? Do you remember that name from growing up at all? He was a hard-hitting defenseman. Played for Ottawa and Nashville. Yeah, I, I don't remember it too much, but I, I think I have heard of it. Yeah, so if you want to hit a YouTube clip or two, he was known. He was kind of like Nicholas Cronwall. He always threw his back into guys, especially coming out of the zone. You had to have your, have your head up when Anton Volchenko was on the ice. Same with you. Was that always a part of your game, trying to close gaps quickly and take players out of the play? Yeah, I think that just growing up, my dad is a, a physical player and he played college hockey and um, he kind of taught me the ways of uh, angling guys and, and kind of catching guys with their head down. And I know growing up, I watched every single Nicholas Cronwell video there is. And um, yeah, I think just over time, it just kind of um, worked its way to where it is right now. And yeah, I think it's a big part of my game. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, us on the show, we love to see a good hit once in a while. So we love watching you with UND. Now, you grew up in North Dakota. And uh, from some messages we got from your dad, apparently you were a big fan of the outdoor rink. He even told us there was a couple times you'd be out on the outdoor rink for 12 hours a day and refused to take your equipment off. When did uh, your love of hockey really start? Like at what age were you always outside with a stick in your hand? Um, I was pretty young. I'd say like around four or five, I was always outside. Um, my buddy just lives right down the street. One of my best friends, Cade Sibby's committed to ASU and we'd always be outside skating around and, and working on our craft and um, just getting better. And my dad had a backyard rink for me. So that, that definitely helped me out too. And I was always out there. And like you said, I never wanted to take my gear off. And um, yeah, I just, it was so fun. Um, not much else to do in Fargo either. So um yeah, I just spent a lot of time out there. I love the solemn protest. You're like, no, like you're not taking me off the rink. Good luck getting my gear off. I'm staying right out here. Was the goal always to play for North Dakota growing up there? Like, are the Fighting Hawks always like? Was that always the pinnacle for you? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, I was fortunate enough to get a couple other offers, but I mean, when North Dakota came, uh, I was definitely just the one I wanted. Uh, growing up, watching all the UND games and. Um, just seeing the Ralph and, and, the, and the great coaching staff here. And it's just the perfect place for me, I think. Close to home, too. Did you ever entertain any of those uh, other options? Maybe you wanted a fresh start, uh, get a new atmosphere, seeing as you're from North Dakota, or as soon as UND called, you're like, that's the one? Um, I actually did. I, I did tour Minnesota Duluth. I know that they're pretty similar school, though. You know, the style that I play, heavy, physical, fast game. And, um, you know, they, they came at me first and, you know, they had an offer ready for me and, um, you know, it was, it was kind of a, you know, a tough decision kind of waiting and waiting for North Dakota, but, um, I waited out and, um, thankfully they came and they gave me an offer and, um, I took it that night too. Was the photo you took with Jake Sanderson, your buddy, were you guys committed on the same day or signed your letters of intent? Yeah, we signed our NLIs on the same day. That's awesome. When did you meet Jake? I know you two played together at the U.S. program as well. Yeah, um, it was going into uh, the NTDP tryouts. Um, we met in the airport. I I didn't recognize him at first, and he came up and, and introduced himself and instantly uh, kind of hit it off, and we've been great friends ever since. What's something that more most people wouldn't know about Jake that you find kind of entertaining about him? Um. Well, I, I just think that his work ethic is, is, is unbelievable. Just uh, the way that he prepares every day. And um, I know a lot of people talk about how much sleep he gets. And um, it's actually crazy what he does. He, he's in bed every night at 8 o'clock and he gets his 10 hours every night or whatever it is. And um, just, you know, the food he eats and just everything he does is just kind of fun to watch. And, um, I, you know, I think I've definitely grown up with him a lot too. 
You got 10 PM, hours. Of- I, I like that. A lot, a lot of sleep. Yeah, it's unbelievable. That's a lot of sleep. Yeah, that's intense. What happens if you have a late game? Does he just snoozing on the bench if it's past 8 p.m. or what? <laughs> Uh, he, he, I don't know. It's just kind of a normal night, but on a weeknight, it's it's uh, pretty early for him. He it likes to uh, get his sleep and come prepared the next day. Yeah, he certainly does. Now, you were able to join him at the World Juniors. What an awesome situation. You go toe drag upstairs, and after the game, get the phone call. Hey, go join the boys in Plymouth getting ready for the World Juniors. Did you know that Jake, as an 18-year-old on that team, I mean, I know you were partnered with uh, Brock Faber, and you know most of the defensemen, on that team, did you know that as an 18-year-old he would play such a big role on that squad? Um, I yeah, I definitely think that he he could have. I think just his skating ability sets him apart from everyone else, and so fast, and he's got really good edges, and he's just so smart and simple with his game. I think that it's it's very mature of him to play the way that he is, and um, yeah, I, I think that going into that, I knew that he was going to play a big role, and um, yeah, he he definitely did too. I love the photo of you two with the gold medal after the game. That was awesome. Yeah, that was a special moment for sure. Yeah, I mean, as uh, Ottawa Senators fans and Canadians, we won't get too far into that game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it wasn't really, uh, it wasn't was really a say. big deal. Yeah, so we'll just <laughs> moving on from that transitioning. <laughs> so you and Jake obviously uh, kind of attached at the hip when it comes to your hockey career. And, hey, you get drafted to the same team in the same draft year. Now, this – this is a draft day unlike any other. Can you take us through what your day was like? You spent uh, most of the day at the Ralph, right? Yeah, my day was uh, pretty hectic. Uh, day two of the NHL draft or in the um, suites here at uh, the Ralph Engelstad Arena. And um, the draft is playing on the Jumbotron here. And um, my, you know, all the picks went by 31, 32, 33. They're, they kept going. And and I had to catch a flight too later that day at like like three o'clock or something like that, and I got picked at like maybe like one thirty or something like that. And I still had to go home and, and get packed up and and then get on the flight. And I I almost missed a flight to go out to the World Junior tryouts. And um, yeah, it was a pretty hectic day, but you know I was surrounded by my family, and it was such a big moment for myself and my community of Fargo and just everyone who's helped me get to where I am today. So you must be like a minute man traveler because that's twice now you've had to hop on a bird really quickly to get to uh, to represent your country. That must be pretty special. I know you got to play with them at the U17s as well. What does it mean when you get to put on that red, white, and blue sweater? Yeah, it's definitely very special. You know, I don't get many more chances, but um, you know when I do, I I definitely take a lot of pride in it and you know put that extra ten percent in my game when I'm playing with it. And you know I. Obviously, I want to win every time I have it on. So, Yeah, no doubt. Well, there's a lot of U.S. Uh, graduates on this Ottawa team already and in the pipeline as well from, from Brady Kachuk all the way down. And I want to get back to the draft, though, because night one happened, and we know that the picks, like you mentioned, a lot fewer and further between than the rapid day two situation. I know you guys were really happy for Jake getting picked fifth overall. On day two, did you know Ottawa was interested? Did you have them circled? I mean, they traded up to get you. I, I'm going to be honest. I had no clue where I was going. I know I've talked to um, you know some teams before that, and um, you know when when Ottawa um, traded up, um, I think that Toronto had it before, and and then all the cameras kind of surrounded me, and I looked at the screen and I saw Ottawa's moved up, and I was like, okay, this is this is my moment, and um, yeah, it was it was definitely a special moment that I'll never forget. So. Yeah, I mean, when uh, the Sens trade up and you're a left shot defenseman from UND, you probably could have figured that they were at least interested <laughs> in you. That's definitely yeah. an Ottawa Centers type uh, draft pick. Now, you mentioned some other teams were talking to you. How how many different uh, Zoom calls and meetings did you have? Like, was it kind of spread out or was there a small group of teams that seemed really interested and dialed into you? Yeah, um, well, I think that I talked to uh, maybe, I don't know, 29 of the teams out there and um let's maybe, drag who's the one you didn't we got to drag them um <laughs> i didn't i don't think i talked to the la kings or the um who was it nah you don't want to go to la i, I, I can't i can't even remember i love it that you got the king's uh photo in the background there too yeah yeah <laughs> well we'll bring that one to ottawa someday hopefully 
Yeah. So when uh, when you were drafted by the Senators and you knew it was all happening, how excited were you when you you're seeing that now you get a chance to grow and develop with three other Ottawa Senators prospects at UND and Jake Sanderson, your buddy, Shane Pinto and JBD. Like what what did that mean to you? And did you did you really know much about JBD and Pinto before you were drafted? Um, yeah, they're they're all great guys. And um, when I was drafted, they all congratulated me and um you know, we call ourselves uh, the Ottawa Sioux now here at, in North Dakota. And, um, yeah, it's it's definitely pretty special. I, I mean, I obviously had no clue where I was going, but, you know, it ended up being like that. And it's, uh, you know, it's an honor uh, being a part of the Ottawa Centers organization. And all those guys help us. And they work so hard off the ice, too. Just every single one of them just so dedicated to their game. And, um, it's, it's fun to watch. And I think that I've, I've grown a lot too, just watching them and being around them so much. Yeah. Let's focus on the defenseman since that's a position you play as well. JBD is a junior. I'm sure with Matt Kierstead being the senior, those guys are, are likely, I don't think I'm overstepping by saying the leaders of the back end. What can you say about JBD's style of play? It just seems like he's so steady, always in the right spots. His gap control is unbelievable. Yeah, he's such a good skater. And I just think that um, it comes from his work ethic. I know that I've said that a couple times now, but it's That's so what you true guys with, preach at NODAC, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just unbelievable just watching him. Um, he's always in the weight room working on his uh, his stretching and his hip mobility and, and his skating on the ice too. I know I go out on the ice sometimes and he comes out with me and um, we'll work on running the line or just simple skills and um, but yeah, I know, I, I know that that translates so well for him in the games and, um, he's so successful and he's, you know, he's just a good overall player. Yeah. And I mean, the hard work preparation and practice is paying off. You guys are having a pretty good season so far. Now, last season got canceled, got cut short. A lot of the guys, especially Shane Pinto and JBD felt like there was some unfinished business. They want to go back to finish that up. What's the feeling like in the locker room this year with uh, expectations for the end of the season? Yeah, well, we all want to win, obviously, and I just think that we all have to buy into the right mindset of, um, you know, a, a winner mentality. And I know that we're we're two games away right now from winning our um, NCHC playoffs, and um, that's kind of on our mind right now. I know that Omaha is coming in next weekend, and we can do it um, this upcoming weekend with the next two games. So that's kind of what's on our mind, and just preparing for that. And having the playoffs soon after is something to look forward to one but how about the fact that it's at your home arena i mentioned before we start recording you guys are four and oh in that building there's going to be a limited number you guys are going to have some fans being able to cheer you on get some intensity and excitement in the building but is that adding an extra layer the fact that you'll be able to host that tournament i think that's huge especially for um myself too i i have a lot of family and friends i get to come so i get to have that little extra burst of energy and um, just having my my family watch me, it's it's you know it's really fun, and um, just seeing them after the games, it's you know it's just fun. <laughs> like I said, it's uh it's something that you know I didn't think that would happen this year just because of COVID, and um, but yeah, just being at home and and being able to play at the Ralph, it's it's definitely a treat. Yeah, that's awesome when you can play at home. And look, we've talked about um, the defenseman on UND, but I want to get your opinion on Shane Pinto. Like, this guy has been an absolute animal lately on a tear, a Hobie Baker nomination. What can you tell us about Pinto that uh, the viewers may not know about him? Um, I, you know, I think that um, Pinto is one of the most p- competitive guys that I've ever met. Um, any battle, any any little game, any, anything. I mean, he's just so competitive and he wants to win everything and his drive for the game is, is like no other. And, um, obviously works his, works his tail off too in the gym and on the ice and always shooting pucks and just getting better with, um, you know, it's just, it's fun watching them and, um, glad I get to play with them too. Well, it's easy for possession too, right? He's winning like 65% of his draws. It's unbelievable. Snap him back. Shane as as we're calling him on the show sometimes. And, when you're looking at your own game, you've stepped in as a freshman. You're playing every single night. What are you trying to improve most in your game to take it to the next level? Going to the draft, all we heard was, you know, you're big, physical, mean, tough. But 
we're looking at you and you did the PK Subban, put it off the board, spin off a forward and you're breaking in and showing some puck skills. Is that something that you've really tried to work on in, in the time between games? Yeah, I think that that's kind of an aspect of my game that I think that I've worked on a lot and think that, you know, I, you know, I can bring a different component to my, my game as well with the offensive side. And I think that I, you know, I've tried to work on that as much as I can over the summer and, just uh, work on my skating too. I want to be, you know, more fast or a lot faster and uh, um, just more agile too. And just being able to, um, you know, assess plays and jump into the rush more so I can create more offense for myself and my teammates. And um, But also, you know, being more defensive too, just being able to shut down plays and um, quickly transition it and, and go on to the offensive side. I just think that, um, working on that stuff, um, it's going to help me out in the future and just uh, keep growing my game. Yeah, if you can combine the offensive style and defensive style, that's going to be awesome. And we were pretty stoked to see that goal, that's for sure. Now, we know uh, growing up in North Dakota, obviously, you're a big uh, outdoors guy. We got some little info from your dad as well. So I want to ask you just a simple one. What's the biggest fish you ever caught? I mean, there's got to be some big stories of uh, you going out fishing in North Dakota. What's the biggest one you caught? Or was it somewhere else that uh, you went and you got a massive one? Um, I don't know what the exact size is, but I've caught some uh, pretty big northern pike and some pretty big walleyes out at Lake of the Woods in, in northern Minnesota. Go out there with my friends sometimes. And um, my, my buddy, I, I mentioned him earlier, Cade Sibby, um, he's got a lake place too, and I'm always out there and um, fishing with them. And, you know, it's just relaxing and a lot of fun. So. Yeah, your dad also told us you and Cade shooting up to 1,000 pucks a day sometimes, and that, that speaks to your own work ethic. I'm sure one of the reasons North Dakota was interested in you. Now, no NHL team in North Dakota. You mentioned Nicholas Cronwall. Was it the Detroit Red Wings? What team did you grow up being a fan of? I was a fan of the Chicago Blackhawks. I liked watching Duncan Keith and Jonathan Days, Patrick Kane. The list goes on and on. Just They're so successful, and – in the era that you know i i grew up watching and um they were just such a fun team to watch and um yeah it was just they're always playing the wild too so they're always on tv and nbcsn and um so i got to see them a lot and yeah i just that was my favorite team i think growing up but obviously that's kind of changed now so now you mentioned Jonathan Taves, obviously a UND alumni. Did you get a chance to meet him or see a lot of him play, or what was the inspiration for uh, really following along with him? I just liked how you know he was a, he's a leader since he was 19 years old in the NHL, captain of the NHL franchise, and you know it's just and so fun to um, you know see how successful a guy is from North Dakota, um, come out of North Dakota, I should say. Um, I know that his work ethic is, is unbelievable too. And, um, just being able to surround himself with, you know, the Patrick Keynes and Patrick Sharp when he was in his prime and Duncan Keith too. It's just, well, Sens fans know Marion Hosa's game. Well, also he was a oh, yeah. stud on that squad. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know. I just, something about him just, you know, I really enjoyed watching. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, that's an easy answer for sure. Jonathan Taves, a great guy to watch. Now, speaking of another UND alumni, Christian Willan and another Ottawa Senators as well. Uh, did you get to really know him very well before? Oh, sorry. I'll just restart that question. So you mentioned Jonathan Taves and now another UND alumni and Christian Willan. And were you training with him this past summer? And uh, what are some of the things you were working on with him? Yeah, I got to ski with them and work out with them over the summer. Um, to some of the things that I picked up from him is his skating ability, and um, he's always got his head up when he's when he's skating too. That's just something that I I picked up from him, and um, always being able to read plays before they happen. I think that he's got an offensive side to him that I'm kind of looking up to. I'd, I'd obviously like to add that to my game, and um, good guy off the ice works his tail off, and um, yeah, I think that. It's just, just um, his offensive game is kind of something I picked up. Definitely. And now he's a mainstay on the Ottawa Senators blue line. Tyler, final question for me is with being drafted by the Senators, you mentioned Will Landon also, have you been paying more attention to, to the Sens and their youth movement? What have you thought from watching their young season? 
Yeah, I've actually watched um, quite a few of the games. I got the NHL package, so whenever I have an off night, I try to throw it on if they're playing, and I just think that uh, watching, you know, some of the younger guys like Tim Stutzel, I think that he's had um, a really good start to the season. I think that he's got six points in, in 13 games now, and he's been a big impact player for the for the Senators. I got to um, watch uh, uh, you know, quite a few of his games at the World Juniors, too, and um, that Germany team, they weren't, uh, you know, really high, highly touted at all, but um, just the impact that he had playing for the for the Germans. And um, I got to watch him against Team Canada, and I know that um, he created some offensive chances for himself. And, um, you know, just the impact that he has on, on a team and his leadership too. I know that he was captain of that team too. So I think that that's pretty fun, and he's in the same draft as me too. So I just think that uh, – Hopefully I can keep developing and, you know, play with him in the future. Yeah, he was a guest on this show, a great kid as well. So with that being said, you guys are in the same draft class. Just a follow-up to that final question. Have you gotten to chat with whether it's Tim or any of the other guys, of course, outside of uh, Jake who were selected with you? Um, we've had like a, like when we were first drafted, we had like a, a little meeting with uh, all the guys that were drafted and I got to introduce myself. And But, I mean, other than that, I haven't really been able to talk to – all the guys yet well we're really looking forward to the day the world becomes a little more normal and we get sense development camp and we're looking forward to meeting you there tyler keep up the great play at north dakota it seems like the perfect spot for you to continue to develop your all-around game and sense fans are keeping an eye on you we got the nodak sense hashtag flying around on twitter and now we're, we know that it's the ottawa sioux as well so that's a little awesome piece of insight thanks for taking the time uh, tyler we appreciate it yeah thank you guys so much for having me appreciate it